Hey everyone, my name is Amanda and today we're going to make pineapple serrano jalapeno salsa and I'm making it to where I can be able to freeze it up and have it throughout the year. And if you want tomatoes this bright red like I have here and have a, an abundance of them, I like to pick my tomatoes when it has a kiss of pink on them. So when you're out in your garden and they're green but you see like a nice like pop of pinkish red tone color on them that's when you want to start picking them because then that way you can bring them in the house put them on the kitchen counter or your dining room table and let them slowly turn red and it's nice because then they stay fresh this way and no other animals are nibbling on them because they're that bright red out in the garden now you're going to cut all the stems off the tomatoes and then you're going to cut them in half and place the flat side down in the roasting pan. And you're gonna do that for all the tomatoes. You need two white large onions and you're gonna slice them into thick slices. Definitely take the outer paper off as well. Remove the ends. And I'm using two white onions because I have quite a bit of tomatoes. If I only had half of the tomatoes I had, then I would only use one white onion. And you can do this to your liking of what you like for your salsa flavor to be like. Line a baking sheet with parchment paper. And then once you're done cutting your onions up, you can go ahead and place them on top of the um, baking sheet with the parchment paper. And for the onions, you don't want to overlap them when they're on the sheet because you want them to cook evenly. I like wearing gloves when I cut any type of spicy pepper. I wear them because you know when you get that burning sensation on your fingers from when you cut a jalapeno? That's caused by capsaicin. It's an oily compound that gives heat and flavor from the peppers. This is why I definitely wear these gloves when I cut into spicy peppers because I wear contacts and it's definitely not fun when you have that burning sensation on your fingertips and you're either removing your contacts or putting contacts in. It definitely does not feel great. So this is definitely why I wear gloves when I cut into spicy peppers. So when making the salsa, you're going to want to remove the stems and then you're going to take them and then cut them in half as well. And if you want it to be spicier, a hot type of salsa, Definitely leave the seeds in the jalapenos and the serrano peppers. For the serranos, I did not cut in half, but I definitely cut the stem off. And for the jalapenos, I cut the stems off and I cut in half and I left the seeds in for some more heat. You need two bulbs of garlic and you're gonna remove them from the paper. Here's all the garlic that I have. I'm gonna set it aside on a smaller baking sheet with parchment paper. I am going to later add it to the bigger tray at a 15 minute mark when it's halfway through cooking. But I'm gonna go ahead in the meantime cut up this pineapple. I am using a pineapple core remover to cut it and to remove the core. This thing is really neat, I like it a lot. My husband got it for me and it really does make it easy to take the core out of the pineapple. Now that I have removed the core from the pineapple, I am going to go ahead and um, individually separate the slices and place them on the parchment sheet on the baking tray. And it's okay that these are gonna overlap. I don't want these to really get roasted as much as I want the onions and the jalapenos and the serranos and the tomatoes to get. So this I'm just gonna overlap because I'm only down to so much room too on this baking sheet. So I wanna utilize the space that I do have. Now that I have everything cut up, I'm gonna go ahead and drizzle olive oil all over the pineapples, the serrano peppers, the jalapeno peppers, and the white onions. And I'm gonna make sure that it's coated nicely. And then I'm gonna take a good amount of salt and I'm gonna sprinkle it all over everything. And you know, you can add as much as you would like to, that's for enhancing all the flavors. But you can see that I'm doing a good amount of it on top of everything. Now that I have everything done on the baking sheet, I'm gonna go ahead and do this to the roasting pan with the tomatoes. I'm going to drizzle it with a good amount of olive oil. And then I'm gonna take a lot of salt and sprinkle it on top all over the tomatoes as well. I'm gonna do the same that I did to everything else to the garlic. I'm gonna drizzle it with olive oil and sprinkle some salt to it. Now I'm gonna set the garlic just leave it on the counter because I'm not gonna add it in yet because I don't want it to burn like I did on the salsa I did in the other video. This I want it to, um, to cook, but I don't want it to burn. So I'm gonna wait for that. My oven is finally preheated to 425 degrees. 
and put the tomatoes in and the other baking sheet with the pineapple, jalapeno, and serrano peppers and the onions on it. I'm going to set the timer for 30 minutes at 425 degrees. Once we have hit halfway at 15 minutes, I'm going to take out the baking sheet with the pineapples, um, the white onions, the jalapenos, and the habaneros, and I'm going to add the garlic to this tray. I only want to cook them for 15 minutes because I don't want the garlic to be really hard. No one wants their garlic really hard. <laughs> so this way that it's still soft, but it's cooked full of flavor. And so back in the oven for the last 15 minutes, it has been 30 minutes and everything is done. Now you want to pull it out of the oven and then just let it cool down on your countertop. You can see all that steam. You definitely want to let it cool before you go ahead and blend it up in the food processor. Look how beautiful all that looks. I cannot wait to taste it once it's done, but definitely let it cool down. I let it all cool down for a good 30 minutes and then I started to put half the tomatoes into the food processor. I pulsed the tomatoes until I got the consistency that I wanted. You can blend it, you can pulse it, um, you can get it to be thick or thin, however you want your salsa to be. First one I made a little bit thick and then I poured it into a bowl. Now I'm going to add all the rest of the tomatoes into the food processor and I'm going to add all the extra juice too from the pan. That way this batch will be thinner so when I go to add the cilantro to it, it'll equal out. I add three large handfuls of cilantro to the um, tomatoes. That way I can then blend this up to get it to a nice consistency. I want the cilantro to be nice and fine. I don't want it to be nice thick chunks. I want it to be perfectly blended into the tomatoes. So blend to the consistency you would like your cilantro to be. Now I'm going to go ahead and add in the white onions into this. Now you can slowly add in to your onions into this mixture to get it to be the flavor you want it to be. But being that I used a lot of tomatoes, I'm definitely going to be using all of the onions for this. Now I'm going to go ahead and pulse it so I get the consistency that I want. Um, I want my onions to have a little bit of a chunk. Um, I don't want them big pieces, but I wanted to have some chunks throughout it. So definitely I'm going to pulse it until I get it to be where I want it to be. I'm going to pour all this into the bowl. Now you're going to add all the pineapple, the garlic, the serrano peppers, and the jalapeno peppers into the food processor. I want to blend mine up because I don't have any liquid in it and I want to get a good consistency of it all mixed together. So blend it or pulse it to the consistency you want it to be in your salsa. That's what can be fun about making your own salsa is making it personalized to what you like your salsa to be. I'm going to go ahead and add all that into the bowl and then I'm going to give it a mix. Now you need one tablespoon of cumin and two tablespoons of lime juice. Now here's where you can add more of cumin or more of lime juice. It's all about how you want to add the rest of the flavor to it. You can make it to your personal liking and then give it a good mix. And then you can get a chip and go ahead and taste it. That turned out so good. I'm really happy with the flavor. I love the sweetness from the pineapple and the heat from the serrano peppers and the jalapeno peppers. It is really good. I'm so happy with this one. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys try making some salsa that you can freeze and have all year long. And I hope you guys have a great day.